Hey y'all, so this is the Mix User Cipher example from lecture, and the basic idea for this is that we want to teach how you can return a function from another function. And so during lecture, you were asked to implement this function, this encode function. Um, and this logic of how to shift every character in a string is pretty straightforward. If you're confused, just ask, ask ChatGPT. What I'm going to focus on is the overall what's going on throughout this code um, and what happens when you actually, when you return a function from another function. So let's walk through this code step by step. First, we define our makes user cipher function. And recall that we're defining this inside of the global context of Python. So that's like the top level of a Python file. We're not defining it inside of a function or anything like that. So you have this make Caesar cipher function, and that is going to point to a function object that we are creating right now. So this is a function that takes in one parameter, that's the shift, and then it has all of this code in it, all chars equals dot dot dot, etc. And all of that code that's inside of this makes user cipher function is just being stored inside of this function object here. We're not going to execute it yet. But then what happens when we actually call this function, this makes user cipher function with a shift of one? Well, we're going to create a new context for our make Caesar cipher function, uh, for that particular call, that is. All right. And then inside of that function, we're going to execute all of this code. So we have altars, which is pointing to, I'm going to actually put it up here, somewhere in memory that stores all of the printable characters. Sorry, my iPad is being very slow. And then we have numchars, which is going to point to whatever the length of that is, so the number of printable characters. I don't know what that is. We'll just say 157. And then we're going to define a function called encode. So that means that we have the function name encode as like a variable name inside of our make Caesar function context. And that is going to point to a function object. And this function object is going to take in a different parameter as input. It'll take in the input itself. So that actual like string of numbers or letters that we want to encrypt. And then inside of that makes user or that encode function, we're going to have this code. That's that is this. But notice that since we were calling make Caesar with a shift of one here, then inside of this code here, when it says shift, instead of it being a variable, that is just going to be plus one, because that's our shift. Okay. And then that's great. So what happens here? After we define encode, we're still in this make Caesar function frame. Then we're going to return encode, and that is different than if we had parentheses and like a parameter inside of here and we were calling it. We're not calling encode, but we're just returning the function itself. So then when we here in our encoder, when we set that equal to whatever makes user cipher of one returns, we're going to set that equal to, that's going to have a function pointer that points to this same function. So in our global frame, we're going to have a variable called encoder or a function name that points to this function. Okay, cool. So what happens when we call that function? Well here, in when we call encoder on ABCD, I'll create a new function context for this call. So that's encoder. Then we're executing this function. And what happens as we're executing it? Well, we have, okay, we're making, we're making a variable output. That's going to be an empty string to start. And then we're iterating through the characters in our input, which is this ABCD. 
And then notice here that we have calls to, or we have variables, all chars and num chars. And those are variables that were defined inside of make Caesar cipher up here. They weren't defined within this smaller encode function. And so actually what's going on under the hood in Python, this is getting into a little bit of detail that you don't have to know in super detail, but just for context sake, um, what's actually going on here in Python is that the this function encode or encoder, depending on where we're, where, what we're referring to, actually keeps a pointer to the function frame, the, the context in which it was defined. So this is called our parent pointer. And so basically what's going on is that this function encode knows that it was defined inside of here. And so when it encounters variable names that such as all chars and num chars that it doesn't quite know what to do with, it's going to go back to the parent pointer and look inside this context for it. So when it sees all chars here, it's going to look inside this here and discover the all chars name, and then it's going to be able to access this value. And then same for num chars. So basically what we've effectively done is we made it possible for this encode function to only take in an input. We don't need to take in a shift or anything. This encode function only takes in an input. And yet, since it was created inside this make Caesar cipher function call with the shift, then it has access to all chars, num chars, and the shift, even though that stuff is not explicitly written inside of the encode function. So basically, then what happens if we call encoder equals make Caesar cipher of two, then we basically have the exact same thing as this, but not quite the same. In that the difference here, oops, we call this with a parameter of two. All chars and num chars are being set in the same way, but then here, instead of a shift of one, then this become sort of like hard-coded to two. And so then we have these two functions, one which was, oh yeah, and then since we, here we set the encoder variable to the output of this function, then we're just going to yeet that pointer, and now it's gonna be pointing to this guy. And so what we've effectively done is now we have two functions, which are basically exactly the same, but this function has a shift of one, and this function has a shift of two. And so that's what we can do by returning the returning a function from another function.